Today I'm going to be showcasing a Chandra deck. I really enjoyed Chandra last season before Dritz was popular. Um, I went through Platinum just straight through uh, 10-0 and 0, or is it 10-0 or 11-0 and 0, and then I went through Diamond like pretty easily. I think I lost maybe like seven times throughout the entire time in Diamond and I got to top 40 with Chandra before I just got tired of her and started playing other stuff for the channel. And um, this season I was like 220 trophies-ish, like a little bit higher than that. Um, and I just didn't like being that far in the dumpster. And there's talk about the season resetting um, tomorrow potentially. So I wanted to see if she was viable again now that Dritzt is uh, significantly nerfed and not in the meta as much. And so I just played my Chandra deck and went from like 220 something to 98th. I think I went seven and one to do that. So I just wanted to show you guys this deck because it's a very viable climbing choice and it's also extremely budget. I don't think that there's any changes from what it was previously, but it was a long time ago that I posted the video. So I'm going to go over it again. So active volcano starting on turn six, there's a chance this erupts and spits fire instead of getting a mana gem, which is deals three damage randomly split among enemies, including their face. That's really, really important. So Pouncing Lemur is a one drop three, two that can't block. doesn't matter. You're just going face. Raging Goblin, one drop two, one with haste. Go in face. Overgrown Iguana, two drop four, two with trample. So fantastic. Um, Sword Cannoneer, two drop two, two debut. Give a friendly creature plus two, oh. So the combat tricks with that are really nice. Goblin Short Cutter, making something can't block. So if they ever go tall on one turn, you can just steal games. Tusker is one of the best two drops in the game because it's so stat heavy. Giant Growth is a fantastic combat trick, especially when you have a trample creature like Ball Lightning or the Iguana. Uh, so Ball Lightning 3 drop 6 1, Trample Haste, destroy this at the end of your turn. So this is just a huge um, amount of pressure to drop. Um, if you ever, like it's turn 6 and you drop 2 of these or you drop this in a Minotaur or any other Haster, it's just a lot of reach out of nowhere. Uh, Blitzing Minotaur 3 drop 3 3 with Haste. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Chandra's Firecrafter, 3-drop, three 3-3, three, three, debut, add a random red spell or trap that deals damage to your hand. So this card can give you just an insane amount of value. When it gives you Lava Axe, it just feels like cheating. Uh, flame Shot, so deal 3 damage to an enemy and 1 damage to each other enemy. So there's a lot of games where you want to set up to where their board could potentially be hit by Active Volcano and then be finished off with the Flame Shot. And it happens all the time. And you also want to make sure that you're blocking in such a way that if you were to top deck flame shot, or if your land went off, that you would then be picking off their board and then getting more damage. So it's really, really important to make the game states like that. Vicious Mongrel is one of the main reasons we're playing green. Four drop four five with haste. It's very good. If you go second and you have the mana gem, just don't use it and drop this on turn three and it will win you games. Uh, Lava Axe, basically between this and Chandra's ability, your opponent starts with nine less life. And it, that's that's really powerful. Hellrider, some more reach and another haste creature. So there are games where um, if this is in your hand or you know there's usually a good chance you might draw it if you haven't seen it yet and it's like mid-late mid, mid -late game, you can not attack with boards and then attack when you have this and do a lot more damage. So sometimes it's not correct to just go for as much damage as possible if there's a chance of pulling off um, a high damaging Hell Rider. And then when you have two of them on the board, it's just crazy. And then Fire Sprout Elemental, five drop six six, haste at the start of your turn, deal two damage to yourself. It doesn't matter, they have to answer this or they're gonna just get beaten really badly. So this is another great card to add pressure to the board. I, uh, I'm gonna film two games. I hope you guys enjoy the video and thank you for watching. All right, we got a Magic and Secura. They do have a free blocker. But if they're any type of greedy Kiora, then we should get the game. I think this is, I think I beat this Kiora um, earlier when I had that 7 1 run that went over, got me over like a hundred and like 15 trophies or something. But I'm not putting this hand back, obviously, right, guys? One, uh, two, three, four. I mean, that's pretty much exactly what you want to do. Listen to nature. Yeah, he was running um, that as well and that land, so I'd be really surprised if this wasn't the same Kiora. If they have Crab, then they might win. Just because Crab and the fish is actually really hard to overcome. So I'm going to do what I told you guys to do in the um, 
their profile and I'm not going to use my fragile mana gem. I'm going to use my fragile mana gem to drop this on three. So it's only going to go one, two, three, just like that. Now, if they play like Lorekeeper, a Neurobot, and a bunch of crap that's got like one defense, this could be dropped on turn three and um, you can swing for a bunch of damage that way. So I'm going to swing and I just want to see if they block with the wolf or not, or if they just let it go. Figured they would. Okay, so now we're going to play the Iguana because it has Trample, so the fish is really mitigated. And then next turn we're dropping the Mongrel. And if this land procs too many times, which is what happened to him our first game, then uh, you just win because they can't... Um, the tempo that they lose from this is not worth the tempo that it takes to summon these... Um, or to play these artifacts. It's just not worth. Um, if I had two two drops, then I think I would just play Iguana in a two drop. But since I don't, I think... This is actually just better. And hopefully this gets the fish out of here. He, maybe he won't want to take 4 damage. He doesn't think that this fish will yeah, get more value than what he's getting currently. And then on turn 4, I might just get rid of a blocker and deal 1 and then 4. Now he might pull another on summon. I don't know. But if he does, I'm just going to resummon the mongrel attack. And then next turn will be uh, fire sprout elemental and he should have big problems. And then turn six would look something like this and this. That's fine. Now I'm gonna guess it's gonna take sturdy shield so he doesn't get flame shotted, but okay. Now I can only play one card uh, this turn, so I am gonna go flame shot on face, kill the blocker, and that's seven damage. And then next turn, I'm gonna do this. Good, that's perfect. Exactly what I was talking about. We want this land to trigger as much as possible and slow him way down. If I draw a one drop, I will flame shot that. And then, okay, I can't flame shot it anymore. Man, it would be so nice to have um, Cannoneer at the, in, this, in this instance. But we're gonna swing with both. Now he might block here and then have a shock from the, um, from the scepters, which is what I suspect. But it does put this at one. So I can flame shot and kill this. Or my land just might take care of it for me. Yeah, and I think he's I think he's looking for the shock right now. Which makes a lot of sense. Now if the land goes off and hits that or hits him three times in the face, then we're in very good shape. I was wondering if that was going to make an appearance. So see, this again, this is another example of flame shot just ruining boards. Okay. So how do I want to handle this? These are the turns that really matter. If I summon Hellrider and swing, he'll take two, block this, heal three. It doesn't seem that great. If I play this and he just blocks here, then he'll go to one. I still think it's I still think this is the play. So we'll let him get the trade here, gain three, but then lose six. So it's still net three loss, right? Yeah. And so now he dies to this and my land or lava axe or um, this and the hell rider swinging at his face. And this is the kind of stuff that you're trying to set up the entire game. Not that playing this deck is hard. I'm not saying that it is, but um, 
it's not exactly brainless either. This is just a really easy example because our opponent kind of gave it to us, right? Yeah, and see, things like plays like this are just way, way, way too slow. No, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't really have a good play, and that's why he's doing that. I'm just saying this package in general is very slow. <laughs> yeah, that's he fine. Silly. Just, just Hell Rider swinging and flame shot is death. So, is this not death? This is death. We'll go right just like that. Got it. So the previous game I played was against a Dritz and I won, but during the middle of it, my OBS started like freezing up with the camera. So I, when I was trying to mess around and see what was going on, I accidentally hit stop recording. So I only got the first like two minutes and 30 seconds. So doing a, another game now, which is always fun. Um, so two, three, and if I can get a one drop, that'd be great. If not, that's okay. I don't see Vraska very often with this land. Yeah, I was hoping for a one drop, but wasn't meant to be. I don't know what they would give up their mana gem for to play on turn two. My little okay, cocoon and that. I'm never mad when I see multiple Tuskers, the card's just so good. Um, so we're not doing anything on their turn and the OBS is actually doing it again where it's being like super laggy and I'm not sure why okay so we really wanted that on his turn but at least we forced the removal spell out of him I think we just put pressure on. Hmm. I really don't know what's going on with the, the OBS. That's a little sad. Well, I apologize if it um, comes wrong, comes uh, comes in kind of chopped up. See, this is this kind of stuff is just BM. I'm going to attack with the Minotaur and play this after. That's interesting. So this makes it to where my flame shot kills this, kills this, and um, we'll deal one to them. Yeah, and I'm not going to block. I'm gonna check my task manager and see. My task manager says OBS isn't even operating right now, which is very strange. Well, I'm still doing this. I think I will attack and set up another flame shot next turn. I don't see why they wouldn't block the yeah three power. Okay. Yeah, 
Yep. And Flame Shot will still clean it up and their Goblin. And I can drop Tusker afterwards. Yep, so here we go. Tusker. They fouled my dude. That seems really um, ineffective. So I'm just gonna play the biggest thing, right? Seven, we can drop this and this. Ooh, or we could just win. All right, guys. Well, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry if there's lag in the camera. Just ignore it for the second game and listen to the audio and the gameplay. And I'll see you tomorrow.